Hey guys, welcome to the Third Planet Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined again by... Kamran Shushtar. How's it going, everybody? And we're recording this after seeing uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, but we still have to get through the whole Rewa era of Godzilla movies. I consider everything that's post-2014 Rewa era, so I throw the legendary movies and shin godzilla and all that into the same basket of uh of godzilla movies but i know technically they're supposed to be separate so we'll so we don't get anybody yelling at us we'll go over legendary first and then we'll go over the japanese godzilla movies so uh comron i guess we could start with uh godzilla 2014 oh man this movie dude so i i was waiting for this movie for so long same yeah i mean what this was like three different movies before it came out it was godzilla 3d it was godzilla this i forgot about remember that there was like a that was a you know it's how many different i i want to know what those scripts were before this like there there was other like potential scripts and i want to know what they were this movie was like the definition of development hell when it was coming out and imagine the time it did come out too because we're at a point where the last movie we got was, <laughs> was godzilla final wars in 2004 and i, oh I like i said i never God. i was never happy about that movie and yeah. I'm just like that especially was like, as an ending yeah and i you know i get into high school and there's no godzilla at all like it's you know you're yeah. going up to but there's no more godzilla so he kind of exited my life for a while because there's just yeah. nothing else is happening at a certain point there too and I'm like midway through college, like multiple years through college. And then because I did like community and four year and I'm in my four year and like, dude, the movie's coming. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's been it it didn't even dawn on me. I'm like, it's been 10 years. That's insane. it took them 10 years to make this. And they because they started right after because Toho finished. And I think that's when they. They offered the rights up because they probably still wanted to make money off of Godzilla. So they offered the rights up right after Final Wars. And they started right when that movie was released, uh, developing this. And they just could not, for the life of them, get this movie up off the ground. I mean, they really had to, to try. Yeah. But this movie itself, dude, man, it. I get like a lot of people I know got disappointed by this movie. And mm. I don't know how you felt, but. For me personally, I have a very, very skewed perspective on it because I'm not even going to lie. This is the one time in my life that a childhood dream has actually come true. And as a kid, like I was very infatuated with the military. I actually, for a long time, wanted to join like Marine Corps and all this stuff. So I had a very like soldierish, soldierish per- perspective of like wanting to that kind of goggles when I was a kid. And you know, loving Godzilla and stuff. And I remember like dream would be, oh my God, what if Godzilla saved San Francisco? That'd be like the coolest thing. Cause also <laughs> it was at that point too, in the show era where, you know, he was saving everything. Godzilla was yeah. a hero. And we're from and, California. So it was cool seeing him like right in our backyard. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like San Francisco proper born and raised in the city mm-hmm. and watching this movie. I'm watching from the perspective of a Marine, no less a Marine going through it and having eye to eye moments with Godzilla who then also saves San Francisco. And it was like in the theater watching it, it was like a massive IMAX. It was like a crazy amount of people. Like a bunch of my friends came with me and stuff. It was a whole like group of us. And I felt like I was a little kid again, watching it in the theater. I was just like floored. And I I just remember after I, I couldn't, I was in honest shock because I was like, Oh, Oh my God. Like, someone made this movie for me (laughs) yeah it's uh it was surreal sitting down and finally watching it and everything um because i remember they they teased the comic-con footage but what they did was smart they didn't release that comic-con footage you didn't get to see any of it until years later i saw it and i will say this um i the trailer sold a very different movie than what we got it very much did like with that being said like trying to come at it from a different perspective which i know would be hard but yeah uh you know you got brian cranston 
and you're like, oh, Brian Cranston's gonna be like the main character. He's set, he's put, you're amazed because you're like, oh my god, they got this really big actor who you're watching Breaking Bad, and I guess Malcolm. And for me, this I was, was like, he hey, was that's hot the, at the time because this was yeah. right off of Walter White and Breaking Bad and everything. I, I was like, yo, is Malcolm's death from Malcolm in the Middle? That's how I because I, I, I never watched Breaking Bad, so I was just like, yo, I love that guy. Check it out sometimes. It's it, it's really good. It's um, so funny. Yeah, he he will always be Hal too, the dad from Malcolm in the Middle, and he was a. Uh, he was the dentist in uh, Seinfeld. Oh so, my God. Yeah, I yeah, mean, he, he just does such, such a good, good actor. Job. Yeah, he's such a good actor. And you think he's like going to be the main character in this and everything yeah. else, and he gets got like halfway through the movie. Not even halfway. I mean, it's, it's. I don't even know. Yeah, they. That's my problem with this movie is that if you look at the Comic Con footage, which it was mostly just like, uh, you know, test shots and everything, but they play a. Uh, who is the scientist who created the nuclear bomb? I always forget his name. Um, but he has that speech where he talks about witnessing the first nuclear bomb test. And he's like terrified in this interview of like what he created. And he goes, you know, the few people cried, the few people, you know, wept and all that. And they, it's a really, really chilling speech. If anybody, uh, uh, hold on, let me look it up right now. I'm going to, yeah, I was going to, I was, I was Cause it wasn't, uh, didn't Albert Einstein have a piece of it? It wasn't like, Einstein. Hold on. Um, man who created atomic bomb. Oh, it was uh, Robert Oppenheimer. Yes. And he's the one he says that really chilling line. Uh, he quotes the Bible and he says, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. They yes. play that speech over the comic con footage of that godzilla trailer and it oh. presents this straight up just apocalyptic world ending movie this is those it felt like you're looking at you know even more so than shin godzilla or the 54 movie like this was world ending right here what was going to happen and then you get brian Cranston's intensity in the later trailers and everything and i think the movie kind of dropped the ball on it a lot definitely of doesn't do any of that yeah yeah they, they definitely make it a different turn what one i know people were angry because of the lack of just godzilla in general mm -hmm. in it which i think someone clocked in it's like eight minutes of the actual film that's like about two hours yeah it's like eight to 15 minutes well we'll talk about that because I, I i mentioned before we started the podcast that the whole Rewa era and the legendary pictures, whether it's, you know, the Japanese Godzilla movies and the American Godzilla movies really, really have a problem with Godzilla's screen time and pacing. And I didn't realize what was wrong with it until watching Shin Godzilla the other day. And it kind of clicked. I was like, Oh, that's what's wrong with these movies. So yeah. I guess we'll get into that in a little bit, but um, yeah, they, I know that they hired a lot of independent, what they did with the legendary Godzilla, the whole monster versus that they've been hiring a lot of uh, really obscure filmmakers that have just, you know, they just made independent stuff and everything and kind of given this has been their big break when it comes to like, you know, writing or directing and everything. And that's really good. And I think that that's given us some really unique uh, things in the, in these movies but it's also kind of been a little bit of a pitfall because you could tell, I think it's mostly the writing in these movies. The script work really needs a second set of eyes. Cause it's always Isn't it Max... David Goyer that did this one. No, it's not David Goyer. It's Max. It wasn't Bornstein Bornstein. I think oh, his okay, name is. Okay. Um, he's done them all. And like Godzilla 2014, it comes so close because it does. It, I... you know, if you just would have gotten, if you just would have had Brian Cranston as the main character and, you know, you could still have his son's perspective, just yeah, like, a soldier's perspective them. in battle, like the comic book we just uh, reviewed over on Apollo City, uh, Godzilla Half Century. No, we didn't War. do that. Uh, the Brandons did that. Oh, that's sure. right. It was, yeah, yeah that Brandon. wasn't us. That, was yeah, that wasn't us at all. Yeah. <laughs> Running joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, tune into that if you haven't. Uh, yes. cool. If you want more Godzilla content, honestly, go check out that Apollo City episode. It's, yes, it's, uh, it's very good. One I'd yeah. say for sure. But I, I feel like with this one, it's also interesting because, like, when you look at the legendary movies, they honestly all feel different because of all these different directors. And mm -hmm. for this one, you get Gareth Edwards, who has actually done a very interesting monster movie before this, which was actually just called Monster. 
Yeah. And it's like a cool, very low budget. It felt like independent monster film. And it's honestly really cool. So like when you hear his name under this, you're like, oh, really? Like, I'm down for that. And, you know, afterwards he did like, I think Rogue One and stuff. But like with this specific legendary Godzilla movie, and I, I mean it like compared to the other three, this is the only one that feels like an actual film if that makes sense. Like it feels like when you look at the shots, you look at the cinematography, you look at everything about it. It feels very much like, Oh, this is like a, this is, this doesn't feel like a necessary, like big summer blockbuster that you're seeing like, Oh, yo, it's this crazy thing. Like transformers. You, it doesn't feel like that tone at all. It definitely does feel much more dramatic. It feels like it's just shot like an actual film, He's... which I did think was really cool yeah it's very obvious that he's taking this very seriously and i like that and i think i mean honestly when i think about it this the 2014 godzilla movie and shin godzilla are the closest thing i think we get to the original 54 one yeah uh, and the the different take here is like you know the, the first time america tried to do this they did in 98 and it was like more nuclear open testing and they're like what if we yeah. got the monitor lizard egg and turn into a monster and shit yeah. this one's like yo it is uh godzilla's what they consider a titan he's an ancient creature that has lived here for god knows how long and he's there the top probably of other... the food chain yeah yeah and there were others like him before whether it was actual godzilla species or other monsters and they're like yeah they're just finally there's a couple rising up now and they're like yeah oh, there could be more and the whole thing with the monsters in this one, the Mutos, which are new original monsters, uh, which stand for uh, massive unidentified terrestrial objects. objects yeah, yeah. Uh, which I like the name Muto itself. Honestly, just sounds yeah. really cool. They're, but they're okay designs. They're nothing. They're nothing special. Like they, yeah, they're just, they're just, they exist. They work. Yeah, and it's like two of them, and they you know they mate and stuff. And the the threat is that they're parasitic. Yeah, and it's like yo, know, you know, this they feed off nuclear energy and everything else but they'll kind of destroy everything with the EMPs that they emit and the issue is that they have a nest and that nest can easily if it's like a bunch of those things around could devastate the planet and mm -hmm. Godzilla is that apex predator to keep everything in line and whereas the other one is like Godzilla representing man's mistake of nuclear weaponry this is Godzilla instead as a representative of nature which yeah I really like that take is a natural disaster you know it's... Yeah, it definitely feels much more yeah. modern especially with today yeah, and I, uh, I I love the design. I think oh, that the design is amazing. So, I think it is the probably the most realistic Godzilla because he has gills and he looks like if Godzilla were a real creature, I'd be like, that's what he would look like. The yeah. 2014 movie and the this a legendary design in general. Um, I think yeah, I this movie comes really close. It's just the execution. I really yeah. think that if it would have maybe had another people look over the script or whatever because um I'll, I'll talk about the pacing right now the problem isn't that they don't show god's the problem really isn't godzilla's screen time per se because like in all the old movies in the heisei and and show and everything he only shows up for like 15 minutes out of the movie anyway yeah that's what i was telling people all the time like actually yeah. it's pretty much like the old movies a lot if you think about it yeah but the problem is and this, this is the problem with the anime trilogy. This is a problem with Shin Godzilla. And it's a problem with the legendary movies is that these, those Showa era movies were like hour and a half movies, hour 45 movies. These are like two hour movies, you know, two and a half, like movies are way longer than they used to be, especially blockbusters. These are like two and a half, three hour movies that we're getting. That amount of screen time for Godzilla from those old movies doesn't work in these new movies, you know? And it felt like that. in like, when I was watching the 2014 movie, I'm like, come on, just show them already. You know, we're, we're running dry here. Shin Godzilla was like that. I was just like, come on guys. And they really need to learn to kind of stretch that pacing out a little bit more, just add on a little bit of screen time and pace it. And then another thing that this movie does is that, I like that they tease Godzilla like they tease the shark and Jaws up until the airport fight. But once the, he shows up at the airport, show the fight. Don't they straight up just go? They cut to TV and you're just like, wow. Oh, I was banging why? my head. I remember because this this came out on my dad's birthday and I remember we went to go see it and he was just like, 
so pissed off in the theater that they cut away from the airport fight because we were in it like we were ready when because it was the, one of the an amazing introduction he shows up does the big roar and then they cut to it i was like that's unacceptable nah all i can feel is like i'm just i'm just like is it the but like what ha- what happened exactly was it the budget did they write it this way like what exactly was the plan there for that well, to, if you to watch happen? the interview Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There was an interview with Gareth Edwards where he explains that he was going for the Jaws thing mm. uh, for suspense and everything. So that way, and it, it does work because you do appreciate the fight more at the end of the movie. It's just you needed a couple. There's three scenes that they really should have expanded upon. They should have showed the fight at the airport. Um, should have like focused on the Muto destroying Las Vegas when it breaks out of the nuclear waste base. That would have been so dope. Yeah. And then um, what was the other one I was going to say? Oh, yeah. Focus more on Godzilla coming to shore in San Francisco. That was an amazing scene where he comes up at the Golden Gate Bridge. Don't cut away from that. Keep showing him go through the city and make his way to the Muto Nest. And the fourth thing that I'll just tack on that could have fixed this whole movie is they should have just made Brian Cranston the main character. Yeah. Like I said, like uh, nothing against. Uh, is it Aaron John- Aaron Taylor Johnson? I think right. Yeah, the uh, he's a uh, Quicksilver. Yeah, and he he does a good job. It's just it definitely like he's there for the ride. He's not really making. Yeah, he's not creating that drama that Brian Cranston is creating by his dialogue. He's just there as kind of like the. He yeah. is the perspective of the audience, which does work well. But definitely, if you have that dramatic human. Yeah. Uh, piece it works too or if they could have like one thing too that they improve on the next movie but in this one like you you don't really get that much justice done for this version of dr sarazawa played by ken watanabe who's just kind of there's in a smaller standard but could definitely have done more for sure in terms of just like uh presence right if you want to watch a good uh video on this uh james rolf the angry video game nerd he's a huge godzilla fan he does a uh i thought he was way too hard on this movie and I was like, you know, a lot of his criticisms was like, come on. Like, you know, that's one of the few times I've disagreed with him on a lot of this stuff. But he does do a, crit- a pretty good, like, his own rewrite of the movie of what he would have done. And, like, one of his things was that Godzilla shows up to fight the Muto at the nuclear plant in the beginning. And Brian Cranston sees Godzilla and it drives him insane. And that's oh. why. So I was like, that that's a good concept. And plus, he still loses his wife and everything. So, I mean, it... The whole thing, I just, it could have been executed a little bit better. And, you know, what we got was good, but it's not one of those movies. It's it's like this with a lot of Gareth Edwards movies, because like Rogue One's the same way. I afford it to the end. It's a... Uh... Yeah. That's a that's a different video for a different time. I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> I, I I felt that when I when I went and saw Rogue One, I'm like, oh yeah, this is a Gareth Edwards movie because the the first act is really slow kind of boring second act is okay third act amazing and then oh yeah third yeah third act really does it second yeah. I, I like the yeah any, anyway anyway i was about to start getting into the movie and then but. uh yeah we'll, we'll, let's keep on track here and but uh it got i think that gareth edwards out of all probably with the exception of kong versus godzilla when it comes to the legendary movies i think he was the best at shooting godzilla because those monsters and the way they fight and the way they move they feel you feel the mass behind them oh yeah and this one definitely you, you, it's yeah. like there's a massive just the shots of his legs and you get like kind of like the hey this is how tall he is and you're just yeah. like oh and also i mean it's the first appearance of the legendary version of his atomic blast and when that happens it is so, cool. so much payoff yeah they the minute you see that you forget everything you had to complain on like you just you're just watching that and you're just like this is the coolest thing i've ever seen and it's just sheerly amazing it's just amazing the music's pretty good for this too so is the opening credits i like that these movies have opening credits there's not enough like movies bring opening credits back the those credits and that music is so i love that each of these we'll be getting into king of monsters in a second but this one it feels so like ancient it feels like a combo of ancient horror mo- it's something massive you're just like yeah. oh my god it just it, it works so well compared to like you're, you're finally seeing america m- not necessarily wanting to do what japan did but they're like we can do it in our own way but still make it right 
Yeah, still like, pay respect to where it came from yeah, and everything. Compared to like, you know, what we've got with 98 and stuff. And then you're yeah. just like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And it's like this, I, I like where this is going. Show me more. Like I, you, you sold me. I'm good. Like I'm in. I, yeah. I'm, I want to see what America can do with this monster now. Let's do it. And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up uh, everything we have to say about this movie. For sure. I... I think what killed me was I had to wait five years after this for another Godzilla movie. And I was just like, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. So but, oh my God. let me just ask you right now. So you like King of the Monsters, don't you? It's, I would say it's the best of the four. I don't think it's that great. I, I, I know. And so I honestly feel like there's varying opinion. And I think the only people, <laughs> a lot of people will say different things. I, I feel like it's either going to be King of the Monsters or Godzilla versus Kong for people. I have gotten railroaded by Godzilla fans who just think that this is the holy grail of Godzilla movies. And let me explain myself. So I, I really liked how serious Gareth Edwards took Godzilla 2014 and how realistic it did feel with, even though it had a lot of faults and I was wanted more of that. And especially since we had to wait five years. So you had five years to make a movie. Okay, guys? Five years. In between, you have Shin Godzilla and Kong Skull Island, pretty yes. much. Like in, in 2016 Ka- and 2017. On a side note, I think Kong Skull Island is probably one of the best MonsterVerse movies. When it comes to I, just... I, I thought of the four, it was probably the weakest. But I'll, we could... If we You're just a hater, that's why. No, straight up, I, I wanted to like it. It's just... Uh, it was beautiful. It was It looked beautiful. But the story falls apart very fast. Like it just, the characters fall apart. They they start just kind of, it becomes very, very milk toast very quickly. Besides I think Johnson it's, Riley. I think it's the best story, best characters, best setup, and best fights. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, we're going to get out of there. Today. Check out my Kong Skull Island review on the, it's an old video on the channel here on my YouTube channel. You can check that out and listen to me, uh, like praise it back then so anyway i'm gonna make um, a kong skull island review where i i basically tell everyone that being every wrong. Yeah. One of my points. <laughs> i'll be like wrong wrong but no continue continue okay so <laughs> uh we'll probably talk about more about kong skull island and when we do godzilla versus kong in our next video but um uh so anyways back to king of the monsters they had five years to make this movie and i was expecting something just as serious and kind of that same tone as godzilla versus or as godzilla 2014 and instead what we got was a modern showa era movie which i mean it was like it was fun don't get me wrong it's it was just not as good as i think it should have been and i think it also displays some of the worst problems that the monster verse has in this movie well guys so we all learned today that Danny's a no good hack and we shouldn't trust any. I'm just kidding. No, uh, I, no. I, I can see what you mean in certain. So when I watched it the first time, there was a point where I like stopped smiling for a second and I'm like, dude, I think they think the audience is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the, this one specific. So specifically this movie, and I'm not talking about the monsters. I'm not talking about, the tributes or anything like that i'm talking specifically about not even the story not the plot the dialogue of the humans themselves feels very very like they're, they're trying, trying to, to be marvel it feels like a combo of trying to be marvel but also like it feels like they're talking down to the audience like the audience yeah. isn't smart enough to understand what they're saying where i'm like dude i'm not stupid i get what you guys are doing you don't have to like treat me like an idiot to make me understand this like i already got it it just the 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 way they have people talk in this it it it, it, i don't know if it is it over exposition is it like i don't know how to describe it but it definitely it definitely doesn't feel like they're just it's not even charles dancing like they at least with the terrorists that do a good job i felt like it was mainly the godzilla crew that just felt very uh not campy but just like i said it's the dialogue you can make it campy and good but this was like, it just treats the audience like they're stupid and they over explain to them during the, the entirety of the movie. Yeah, no, I, uh, hold on. I'm looking something up right now. Just on the, uh, gotcha. So I can make sure I get the actors right. So, okay. I, 
I agree. I didn't think I thought the dialogue was terrible. And I hate that Marvel has done this, that every other film franchise oh boy, tries quips. to be Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Stop with the quips. I don't want comedy. I was already I was already tired of it Godzilla in Marvel movies. movies. Huh? I, was, I already hated it in Marvel movies. I'm like, I don't want I more of these shitty quips. Either give like, me a comedy or just don't make it a comedy. I, I like when Tony Stark does out. it. Not everybody else has to. Exactly. Exactly. That's and why I, I like just, Ant-Man. I hate that. I hate that it works in Ant-Man. But yeah, I, works ha- <laughs> I hate that it made its way into Star Wars. I hate that it made its way into god yeah these okay this movie is having such an identity crisis because it doesn't know what it wants to be it's like do you want to be marvel do you want to be a show or a godzilla movie or do you want to be you know continue what they were doing last time in the movie and it's just it's so irritating too because they took Two of my favorite, I really liked Ken Watanabe as Dr. Serizawa, and I really like his assistant, Dr. Graham. I thought that they were. Dude, I I was so sad. I thought that they were the best characters out of, you know, the last movie after post Brian Cranston, I guess. And I was like, that would be cool if it's just them two in each Godzilla movie to kind of carry the, you know, the torch. They're leading Monarch and everything about that <laughs> spoiler alert they die and they kill off dr graham in the most insulting way possible and they kill off dr sarazawa which it was a moment that should have been saved for a way later movie the way they did it it was just god i hated what they did with that and instead we get this annoying ass zoologist we get millie bobby brown who i didn't give a shit about they skip over they barely give the just make Dr. Dr. Sarazawa, Dr. Graham should have been the main characters in this movie with the twins, Amy and Yumi, the Mothra's twins that are in the movie, which was yeah, cool they, the way they worked them in. They they definitely, so at least with the human characters, you feel like, uh, I forget what his name is, but Kyle Chandler's character, yeah. uh, he is like a replacement Brian Cranston, it feels like. it definitely. He's, but he's not Brian Cranston. That's he, a problem. You definitely don't feel that at all, which is also funny because uh, for those that don't know, like he's in other stuff. He's in Manchester by the Sea and he yeah. does a great job in that. Well, he's but a he's good also, actor. Yeah, I'm not he's, saying uh, that. He's in Peter Jackson's King Kong movie, actually, as uh, he's the action a, hero. He's such a douchebag in that he's movie. I love it. He's but, so good at it in that movie, too. He is. And they have like all these other characters and some of them work well, honestly. Like I like this. The soldiers are kind of cool. I mean, it's just like, you know, have the soldiers be soldiers yeah. and it works. But the villain uh, was good. I like the villain. Charles Dance's character. That's just because uh, he's a good actor. He's amazing in no matter what, like in pretty much anything he does. And for those that don't yeah. know who Charles Dance is, he, you know, you'll know him as Tywin Lannister in Game of Thrones. So he, yeah, just, that's he, right. He all, his presence, I'm not even joking, like his presence just screams charisma. You just want to listen to, you, you, when you see him, you're like, I can't wait to hear his voice. I just want to hear him talk and say anything that's even witty. I just love every moment of that to the point where like, you know, he get his, uh, his interactions with Millie Bobby Brown's character, uh, Madison, and the whole thing where he just does like the smile, the smile, and then she flicks him off. And you're just yeah. <laughs> like, honestly, that was done well. Like that, that kind of stuff was just really cool. But all right. Uh, besides like the characters themselves, like, th- so yeah, just take every other character out of the movie. The guy with the, the older guy with the glasses, that's always making jokes. I don't care about you. Go away. You know, the, 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 ice cube son go away don't want you in the movie and then they had a who else was there you know you have the the really strong black lady who's the who's the lieutenant the army colonel isn't that um, don't care about you go away too isn't she in um i feel like i've seen her in something and then there's that nerdy there's that little nerdy white guy that like does a, he was doing like his testifying or whatever at the court and he's he's like a that, running that joke the movie. Uh, i mean he's pretty much the co- comedy relief pretty much he's like the isn't he from uh silicon valley yeah that guy and i'm just like you didn't need a comedy relief in this movie and i i don't think that the director i forgot what the director's name is i know he directed krampus but i didn't think he was that great at filming krampus krampus sorry i was like krampus. who's krampus yeah i know <laughs> Every Russian person is going to come after me. It was like, how dare you? I thought um, Krampus was German. Whatever. It's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. I don't but know. Yeah, he, Mike, so Mike Doherty, I was actually really excited. Doherty, okay, yeah. Uh, he directed, 
what I would consider like the Halloween, the Christmas story of Halloween movies, which mm-hmm. is um, Trick or Treat. And yeah, yeah, that one. I was like, oh, dude, he's doing it. I can't wait. And then I learn about him and he's like, I grew up with Godzilla and I really love Godzilla. So if I'm making a Godzilla movie, I'm straight up going to put in as many tributes, as many Easter eggs as possible. And you get that. Oh, my God. You get that in the music. You get that in okay. with the twins. You get that with like the monster designs in different ways. Let's but... just stop right here and acknowledge this movie has the best Godzilla music out of any movie ever made. Any Godzilla movie ever Agreed. made. I, you know, had the amount of times I have played the Godzilla theme and then the like Blue Oyster Cult, yeah, ver- like their version of Blue Oyster Cult song, is I work out to that song. That's how good that song is. This like, music gets you pumped up in this it's movie. It's amazing. Uh. It, they do so well with it, along with the designs and the fights of the monsters. Like you're getting a lot more monster fights, and I feel like you know we were being a little overly negative, but like, uh, I mean, like I said, it's just the hu- certain human characters and their dialogue. It's not even the actors. It's just the dialogue itself just doesn't fit and it makes it feel just really like it said it, it puts in that weird marvel medicine and it also makes you feel stupid when you're listening because it feels like they're talking down to you like it, it honestly it, it's it honestly felt insulting to hear at certain points yeah. but the monsters themselves are so well done oh the, yeah the designs are great in this movie for all of them i did not expect that the monster i love like i love seeing godzilla on there easily Mm. i love godzilla godzilla is my favorite monster in anything he's my favorite character in pretty much anything but when you see rodan come out of that volcano with such a good scene compliments him i was like i just want so much more rodan right now like i that's why i'm like i want another godzilla movie in the monsterverse but if i could get any monster movie now if they could make just one if they said we can only make one more i'd be like dude give me a rodan movie just give me the rodan movie that is all i want please oh please give me this movie like i want more with this monster to the point where like you know you have rodan you have Ghidorah, you have mothra you have five new you have five other monsters four of them no four other monsters three of them which are brand new you have like brand new monsters behemoth who's a giant mammoth Scylla, who's like this weird kind of like spider tentacly monster you have methuselah who's like this massive mountain of a monster you have a second female muto so there's another muto there and it's another female and then of course you got rodan mothra Ghidorah, and godzilla so you have all these different monsters and they're like yo there's like 17 total and you're like there's even more and you're just like oh my god I hated that that Mudo showed up and bowed to Godzilla. I'm just like, no, they're supposed to be. That's like the natural predator. Um, but okay, I'm gonna come in with more negatives because, like I said, I oh, love no. the cre- I, I love the creature designs. I like the overall like cinematography of the movie. I hate the way that they shoot the fights in this movie because they move way too fast. They don't have that kind of mass weight to them and everything. Really. And, yeah, I didn't. I thought I th- they were still pretty slow compared. I mean, like I, after also not really spoiling, but just watching Godzilla vs Kong, they are much slower in this than in that movie. Yeah, I don't know. I just I thought that Gareth Edwards did a better job. Um, I get that. I, I get. I guess I could see in terms of like the massive for sure the heft with the that. I guess the difference here is like it's like I said where like when I watched the Godzilla twenty fourteen Gareth Edwards movie, I'm like. This feels like a film. Yeah. Whereas I watched this one and I definitely am like, this feels like a blockbuster. It definitely feels. Yeah, exactly. In terms of everything about it from the acting to the uh, cinematography to just like the, yeah, the monster fights themselves. It's just like action, 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 action. And like no complaints too with the monsters. Like you get so much action with them. They're in like the entirety of the movie, like pretty much from start to finish practically. And I think they still still screwed out <laughs> I I, i'm like oh no he's dying <laughs> they still mess it up with this movie because like i said before they have a really bad problem with pacing godzilla and the monster screen time in this movie they said okay we're just gonna put them on screen more and you still messed it up because it's not that they needed to put them on screen that much more and have them throughout the whole movie it's that when they're on screen stop cutting back to the humans you cannot get through a single fight in this movie without 
constantly being interrupted by human characters that we don't care about in this movie. Just show the fight. And that's That's very it. true. Yeah. I, I do agree with that. I, I will say though we still get so much more like utilization with them. Like you get Godzilla just swimming around and like doing fucking alpha shit, just like, hey, I know this space is here. I'm just gonna, you know, flash my shit at you. And or like I mean the the Rodan chase is absolutely epic. And I do I don't like that they kept cutting away, but also like we I feel like we do get enough of a lot of these monsters when we do get them. Like they, when you see them, you're just like, oh shit. And I don't want to say they feel like breaks, but you're just like, oh, the monster isn't out there anymore. Quick, like run to the bathroom. This is your chance. This is your one yeah. chance before it happens again. Exactly. So at the very least, you got a good bathroom break there, which True. Uh, in a way does work itself out. But at the, there is also some things as a fan that I was just mad about because this is when at the end of the day, it's a remake of G- Ghidra, the three headed monster. Yeah. It's a direct remake of that movie. But I was just like, we never get to see God's. I wanted my Godzilla versus Rodan fight. That's what I was looking forward to. And in the trailer, there's that scene where like he's kind of t- Godzilla's kind of turning and snarling. You see like these claw marks across his face. So I was like, I bet you that's like Godzilla shows up in Mexico when the volcano blows up and Rodan comes out and they have a big fight and everything. And, you know, Rodan claws his face. They never even interact in the movie until like the end. And you never see Godzilla versus Mothra. Like Mothra barely does anything in the movie. It just felt like they really didn't. They could have cut so much of the human shit out of this movie. And again, script. I just think that script wise, this is the worst one out of all of them. I just, really like do. I said, just with the specifically the dialogue, the, the actual yeah. plot line itself, I thought worked well. I mean, I thought the plot itself was pretty cool. Just like Eco Terrorist trying to do it and then it backfires and it's like, oh, this is a monster that's not even from here. He's an alien and he's going to fucking uh, terraform the planet. And you're like, oh, Jesus, okay. Uh, th- like the way they do Ghidorah, I thought was really dope. Especially you see the Mike Doherty shit in there when yeah. Ghidorah loses his head and it grows back and you're just like horrified watching it like, oh, you could do that. <laughs> I did like it. <laughs> they made King Ghidorah intimidating in this movie. He oh, was scary. very much so. Yeah. And yeah. it's like they, they make him very much like three different heads of doing their own thing and it's yeah. interacting with each other where you, you don't get that in the other like you don't get that in Toho movies of course because it's dudes in suits whereas this one they yeah you know, reform to act and be like yo what would happen if like you know one head is doing this how would the other head react to that and stuff and it's like oh that's actually really cool and you know with it having the CG there like it just definitely works in their favor but um like I said, I, I do agree on things like the dialogue and the cutaways a lot. But overall, I think with what they had, you know, they have a limited amount of time and they're introducing. It's just like, you know, putting too many heroes into one movie and stuff like that. It, it, if you have too much, then it's going to go a little bit crazy there. So you can only give so much time to each one without it becoming too, um, I guess, bloated. And I will say, too, in their defense, this is like, a completely different studio than the one that did 98 and this is their first run compared to like you know toho's had how many 50 years doing this yeah I, I know yeah I, I get exactly what you're saying yeah they're, they're brand new with this they're still trying to figure it out and you know they only had one movie out before this for godzilla and they're not really making this after kong skull island they're making this pretty much simultaneously practically mm-hmm. and and especially too it takes a lot more cg in this one because you have a lot of different monsters fighting the kong is a little bit different and with this you're kind of the way we see it is these movies are pretty much going trial and error they're like trying to see what works in the next one they're like people watch godzilla 2014 oh what did they say uh they wanted more brian cranston but we killed him off and they wanted more godzilla cool are those the two biggest things people want yes okay give them more godzilla monsters and give them someone that's like brian cranston then and have him do a lot of stuff and they're like okay and that's what you see in this one. And then you get the feedback from this one. And then you see in Godzilla versus Kong what they do with that. And you could kind of see as each of these go, because it's not like they're completely different movies. These are the continuation of specific characters and or specific monsters, I guess. And they're just trying to figure it out as they go. Whereas now they're getting to a point where it's going to be a lot more freeform because you're like, okay, if we're going to do the monster verse, like they're saying, you know, they can make them all visibly different and kind of i guess not necessarily 
be more free form, but like they're not tied to like necessarily going through that trial and error or they've learned from them to go like, okay, just stick with these specific foundations for all of the movies and then do everything else around that. But just make sure you got these specifics in there uh, to make sure these are pulled off well. Right. And you know, I, I get what you're saying, but I don't, my biggest problem with this movie is like I mentioned earlier is like, it doesn't really know what it wants to be. And that kind of relates to what you were saying with the trial and error thing and everything. But you know, it, it's having a real identity crisis and there's two ways you can go about making a Godzilla movie. You could either go the dark, serious route, like, you know, make it like a natural disaster, go, you know, gritty, realistic, like they did with the original 54 version, like they did with, you know, the 2014 version with Shin Godzilla and all that. Or you could just lean straight into the tea, into the cheese of it all and go with this like B movie sci fi um, uh, Godzilla and everything. And maybe at the, I, my perfect Godzilla movie that I really would love, uh, you know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, talk about it a little bit at the end of this episode but you know i i'm just not a huge fan of this movie i i it's a movie that i like going and watching clips my favorite clips of it on youtube because there is some fun fan servicey moments but it's just it's not one of my favorites i gotcha i could i could still watch it god knows how many times i could keep watching it all day but like um like i said i, I like to I, I choose to see it as a tribute to godzilla if anything, mm-hmm. like it's just Mike Doherty going like, I want to make a big ass tribute as the film. And I'm like, cool. And then I watch it. And I'm like, yes, this, yeah. is, <laughs> this works. Um, uh, but I can listen to the like, soundtrack all day long, though. Oh, my God. Yes. I got that yeah. album on Spotify. <laughs> yes. Yeah, people yeah. don't realize the the composer for that. Greg, Greg Edmondsy, I believe his name is. Uh, he did the God of War or soundtrack. I can uh, tell that PS4 <laughs> game. And I'm just like, oh, oh my God, of course. You. But yeah, that's uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. All right, I guess that takes us to over across the big pond to Japan with Shin Godzilla. I just saw this movie for the first time the other day, and holy shit, this is, this is a good movie. Dude, I I told you before, I have friends that watch this that aren't big Godzilla fans or anything, yeah. and they're like, you know, they appreciate film, and they came to me and were like, dude, this is actually, like, as a film, this is the best film of the year, of that yeah. year it came out, 2016. They're like, like better than the Oscar movies that came out that there, they were like, this is like amazing for what it did. And I'm, yeah. I'm, God, it was, it's epic destruction. Honestly, I, I will say this like the original 54 movie. You cannot walk into this movie thinking you're going to see a giant monster fight movie. You need to walk into this with like a, a like you're going to see a disaster movie because this this one wasn't actually based off of you know hiroshima and everything or the the nuclear test in the pacific this was more based off of the uh 2013 uh fukushima yeah, the, yeah the fukushima earthquake and everything the and the nuclear power plant so um and you very much so feel that with a lot of the imagery and everything in this movie it's you know I don't. I think again, it kind of suffers from a little bit of the problems that that I had with some of the legendary movies. I was like, there is a little, there's too many characters. I think, um, but well, I don't. I, I I think they work really well in this one. Like they do a great job. Yeah, I think the thing, the difference is, is that while I still think there are a little too many characters and people to keep track of, first off, they kill off half of them throughout the movie so it's like great you don't gotta worry about them and they don't dwell on them as much as they do in like the legendary movies uh and another thing is too i think it has that same problem with that you can't use that same amount of screen time you gave godzilla in the older movies that were only like you know hour and a half hour 45 movies and like a two hour movie you can't do that because there were some times i was just like come on i want to see godzilla guys like i just want to see because when he he just levels everything in this movie. And I wanted to see more of him leveling everything. I remember how excited I was for this because I was in such a weird world. I'm like, dude, I just got Godzilla 2014 and I'm getting another one of those soon. Before that, I'm getting another Japanese Godzilla movie. So I'm getting both American and Japanese Godzilla's practically simultaneously and i'm just like dude what did i do 
to get so blessed with such beauty in the world <laughs> and I, I was just i'm like oh my god it's great and i go to watch and i loved when they first show his design it's just like that poster and that little eye mm -hmm. is just looking and i'm like dude this is the first time in my entire life where i'm looking at godzilla and i'm like dude it's kind of scary and Man, he was intimidating in the movie he was scary um i'm not a huge fan of this design i this is not my thing with it um i think that god some of the cgi shots in this movie are really bad you gotta you gotta remember really this isn't hollywood bad. this isn't like hollywood creation you're still in another yeah. country doing this and yeah you know, they... and i i had to kind of i was like oh yeah that's right they probably don't have the billion dollar budget like we always have over here but uh and because especially you're not this isn't a movie like it was very limited released yeah. in theaters here so and you're looking at it it's great in japan it's like cool but you know that's not when an american movie comes out it comes out everywhere yeah this one is not that and with it too you look at this movie and you're seeing a completely completely different godzilla where you're watching godzilla evolve like he starts off like a as like a fish monster practically he's just mm -hmm. like all fours he can't do anything he's pretty much like honestly when you're watching him destroy things he's more like dude what am i i don't know what's happening right now like he yeah. looks like he doesn't know what's even going on and he's just reacting to this, his situation and this movie shows people dying like people yeah. like there's a family with like kids and everything that are trying to get out of this building and godzilla just you know topples a building it shows them all being crushed shows dead bodies that they're burning them and everything and you know that there's radiation poisoning this is a disaster movie and it's a very realistic disaster movie you know because i guess you know japan just can't catch a break and everything so i mean they've been through a lot of disasters so they know what it's like you know with this kind of stuff and it's just it's a really good movie and i was surprised i would highly recommend anybody check it out it feels it feels a lot like an anime yeah, because yeah. the whole thing with it too, it's it's tackling with the, with it tackling that of where the 1954 tackles both like Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the current like the at the time the continuing testing of nuclear weapons. Uh, this one is much more like okay, this is the Fukushima disaster that happened, but you know a lot went wrong in this, and they're like, mm -hmm. what if we showed you why it went wrong and how we would make it right? Yeah. And they show all of the red tape that Japanese government have to go through in response to a type of disaster. And then you watch as like, you know, that government is starting to do well and they're starting to respond like you were hoping they would. And then, you know, they just get got. And now yeah. you have this new generation that has to pick up the pieces and do what they need to do. It literally it feels like you're watching the U.S. government try to deal with coronavirus. Yeah, practically. <laughs> I mean, that's why when, uh, when other nations, confidence. when the U.S. and others get involved too, you're just like, dude, don't trust America. <laughs> I like how even in the movie though, there's moments in the movie where they're like straight up like rooting for the U.S. against Godzilla. They're just like, way to go, USA. I'm just like, damn, they're more patriotic than we are. Yeah, uh, it's country. A, even watching the movie, I'm just like, bro, don't do it. You know what they do? They're really I sick. know. And then Rud <laughs> but, you know, think just bad when Russia and China get involved. Yeah, it's a, it's like, yo, who do we trust? It's like, dude, just trust the French and maybe the Germans. Like, they are the only ones that are really helping you out here. Yeah. But it, like, actually, when you watch the movie, you get like the the foreign politics are pretty cool. It's very brief, but like, they do a good job with what they show, and it's really awesome watching. Just honestly. The humans in this, the scientists are so much fun to watch because you have this awesome like brainstorm music going on and yeah. they're all trying to figure shit out. And you're just like, dude, I, I, you're like, understand, you're actually sort of understanding it. And I'm like, I'm a scientist, but that makes sense as right. an audience person watching what's going on here. So I kind of feel smart watching this at the same time. Uh, it, like it gives you all these awesome feelings uh, as you're going through it. And through it too, like Godzilla is just represented as the disaster in this. So he's not a personality. He's just this thing that keeps evolving and creating destruction as he just evolves. And he's not even, you kind of see, he's not even trying to mm. be a monster. He's just existing. He yeah. is existing like a disaster would just exist. And you watch humanity try to combat that. And then you show like, oh, what happens when humanity does this? And then you're like, well, nature responds in this way. Mm -hmm. And 
when I say that, you get what I honestly call the art of destruction. It is the most beautiful destruction I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, it's actually amazing looking. Like you watch Godzilla change where he has like, fi- he blows out fire and he evolves to where the fire ceases and turns into a like, pinpoint purple laser so his atomic blast turns it just straight up into a purple laser blast and it's amazing because it's just so accurate it like there's these american stealth bombers that are trying to take him out and he just aims up and they're gone takes out the helicopter with the politicians on it gone just mo- looks around the city pointing it around they're just gone and then you find out the tail his tail can do this same thing and it is just sheer amazement as you watch this happening but also the music that plays the music in this is like dread it is requiem dread sophistication art music like that's the best way i can describe it it is sheerly amazing the vocals are amazing and the song i'm talking about there's two very specific songs persecution of the masses and who will know and the one that happens during that destruction scene is who will know. And it's like, it, the whole thing is like, if I die, who will know? And it's like, I forget how the full lyrics go, but it's it's like this whole thing. And it's not even about the humans. It's about Godzilla. And it's supposed to be Godzilla's perspective for it, but it's just done so well. And you're just kind of floored with the way they do everything and how beautiful it looks. And like, I, this is the only time I ever say destruction looks beautiful in anything. It just is amazing. Yeah. This is a heavy movie and it's uh, I think it needs a sequel. Like I kind of, I do want to know what's going to happen next, but at the same time though, it's just, I don't know. It's I'd be, I'd be if okay it didn't, if it didn't it, have It one. works well as an amazing one shot, just like the original yeah. 1954. They work so well, just alone is what they are. Yeah. But this is not a Godzilla I could ever see fighting another monster or anything. This is very different, this movie. Yeah, you just... You I don't want to see this Godzilla fight another monster, actually. So, someone did a, a, a funny, like, meme of just, like... It shows the other monsters. I think it's their Showa era forms. And Godzilla's like, hey, guys, they got a new look. And it shows, like, the, the Shin Godzilla face. It's and the other monsters are just horrified they're like oh my god what happened to you <laughs> yeah it's a, i i thought when the trailers came out that this was like the original 1954 godzilla that was like regenerating or growing back and that eventually he was gonna like grow all the skin back and everything but i guess not and it's uh he really is an abomination of just because like he you can see like you know whale skeletons and everything like in his skin and everything he's like a yeah. really just made up of all this debris and everything from the bottom of the ocean and uh yeah it's a it's an interesting it's a it's a different godzilla movie but it also i think is you know like i said along with the 2014 movie i think is the closest we've gotten to the to the original 1954 one and it's a this is not a happy movie it's not a there is some humor in it there is some humor in it a a little bit just when you get the scientists but it's very brief very much so Go in with the mind that this is a disaster movie and not a giant monster, you know, run yeah. around movie. It's a very heavy movie, like I said, and uh, definitely I, required though. You had like you, yeah, need to watch this. If you only watch two Godzilla movies in your entire life, this is one of those two besides the original. I would say, honestly. yeah, and it's uh, you know, it's uh, like I said, it's got some of the problems that I think a lot of the other movies post uh, Final Wars have, but you know, it's a uh, still not bad it's a very good movie it doesn't drag it down as much as it does the other one so yeah i think uh that's it for shin you saw the you remember what happened at the ending right oh with his tail coming apart dude that was horrifying yeah that was terrifying i was just like that's why i was just like it does i kind of do want to i want to see where that's gonna go and i won't won't say anything but y'all just watch and you'll understand exactly what (laughs) i mean it's a it's been a long time they should have seen the movie already (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, it's just uh, Godzilla people. I'm not but, even joking. Godzilla. Anyway, what's the next one? Godzilla, uh, Planet of Monsters, the anime. I hate this movie. The Are you talking about all three or the first one? All of them. I don't like yes. any of them. <laughs> I hate these movies so, so much. Because three... I... Okay. I, can can yeah, I yeah. preface this? Go, go for it. Go for it. Many of my longtime followers know I'm not an anime fan. I don't watch anime. I've only have seen one anime movie, and it's Ghost in the Shell, which I actually really like. I like Ocean Shell, 
Um, I, it's just something I cannot get into. Maybe it's because people I know who like anime are usually straight up weebs. No offense to weebs. You are a weeb. You know, I have no, sh- I have no right at all to talk shit on weebs actually. Cause look who I am. I'm a grown man who collects comic books and action figures. But anyways, yeah, I'm not a huge anime fan, but I was looking forward to this trilogy because I thought what an awesome idea that humans Godzilla wins and he humans have to leave earth and they try to come back to retake it 20,000 years later. I was like, what a cool idea planet of monsters. So the monsters are ruling the planet. So that mean we're going to see like monster Island across all of earth and everything and all these different creatures and you know, the creatures we know and love and what things are going to be like. It's, this could be so cool. I'll let you go on Comron from here about this movie. So it, it's they do some entry. I will say they do some interesting stuff. I'm not gonna. I'm not disagreeing with Danny. Trust me. Like I, I, I have my own words about it, but I guess not as angrily. <laughs> but like uh, the 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 way they do it, that's actually really interesting. Is the humans that get attacked? Like this whole thing is Godzilla has been destroying the planet, and humanity gets aid from two different alien races who are like, Hey, we've got our plants been destroyed by stuff and but we're, we'll help you fight Godzilla and it doesn't work. So all three, you have humans and two different humanoid alien races all take to the stars and leave. And they leave for a very short time, like um, to the point where the main, the protagonist of the trilogy is a child when Godzilla destroys the earth and when he comes back he's like a he's probably in his late 20s honestly he it's only been like probably 20 something years or something 25 years maybe uh that they've been in space and the amount of I guess distance they were at or something the way they were traveling the earth itself had actually already gone by 20,000 years when they actually come back so they were gone for 25 years in their time but for whatever space occurred 20,000 years pass and they come back and it's a complete just like nature is back in control it's an entire jungle of a planet now and they're like oh maybe Godzilla's gone wrong and this is what's interesting is there's two Godzillas in this and one's like a small Godzilla and then you find out that was a small Godzilla and then there's an even bigger Godzilla See, my problem is this Godzilla is so big, I can't take it seriously. It is, it, it's funny it's because big. <laughs> when you get Shin Godzilla, you get the legendary Godzilla. They're like, yo, this is the biggest Godzilla you've ever seen. And then yeah. they come out with Shin Godzilla and they're like, yo, this is the biggest Godzilla you've ever seen. And then you get this anime and they're like, yo, this, this is, is actually Godzilla. actually the biggest Godzilla you've ever seen. And like, this is... Uh, My nickname for this Godzilla is Gaia Godzilla. This is like Earth Godzilla. This is like Godzilla, the Earth Godzilla. Like he's just kind of like a manifestation of the planet practically. Not necessarily like nature, but just of the planet itself. He's made out of plants in this version, isn't he? No, I wouldn't say plants. He's just like... Because he looks like like, he's made out of wood. His design is just different. I don't know what to describe what the material would be, but I don't think it's like plants or wood, but he's just definitely like something that's... I don't. I, I honestly don't know how to describe it, but it, it, I think it is supposed to be like wood and vines and everything. Like he's supposed to look like he's from like planet Earth, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, which brings up one thing before I let you. I'll let yeah, you continue, sure. but I just got to say this is one rant. How do you have three friggin' movies with the jungle with living plants and a jungle taking over Earth and a oh. Godzilla made out of plants and shit, and you don't have Biolante show up in any, not even a reference. God, I hate these movies. I did a, one, of, one of my older videos. You can look back. I reviewed the first movie when it came out, Planet of Monsters, and I thought it was just like, man. And the more I think about it, because I finished watching the trilogy the other day for this video, and I was like, I hate these movies. I really do. They <laughs> suck. So the, the, the problem with these movies is like, all right, the monsters you get, like each movie, you get another monster practically. Well, let's and just focus on Planet of Monsters right now. Oh, we're just going to... Okay. Yeah. okay. Planet um, of Monsters, which only includes, like, what? One, two monsters? It has Godzilla Little and then Godzilla Big. And, and some flying... Some flying, like, reptile bird monster things uh, that they fight. But pretty much, like, the, the humans come back and they just are... 
they destroy this small Godzilla and then find out there's an even bigger one. And it's like, you done messed up. And it yeah. just starts like destroying everything again. All yeah, over. And I was and... just like, I was like, okay, that's, you know, I was like, I thought, I think the reason why I didn't hate this movie that much at the time, because I was just like, well, let's see what they do in the sequel. Cause I was like, okay, well, it was a fake out. Now there's an even bigger Godzilla. It's kind of dumb, but all right, you know, let's see what they do in the sequel and everything. And this one is, it's very slow. So like, it's a full movie. It feels pretty slow. And of all of them, it probably out of the three has the best pacing because you're, it, you're you're going in though with that expectation that you're like, okay, it's the first of three. You're going to see a lot more in the other two. Like this is just yeah. like the opener and you, you, you just, you're expecting more. You, you don't actually get that in a way, but um kind of i guess objectively looking at this one uh, you have to give it that kind of pass a little bit in a way yeah and you also okay this i have to say about i'll just say about all three of these movies right now i mentioned again time and time again through this interview for this podcast that the biggest problem with the rewire era is godzilla's screen time is godzilla's like lack of screen time these movies are atrocious when it comes to the lack of Godzilla and other kaiju in these movies, it is a movie called Planet of Monsters, and we don't even see Godzilla fight anybody. Like the potential was endless with this. They movie. should have just called it Planet Monster. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Honestly, honestly that would have been honestly time. actually. Yeah. But yeah that, honestly, there's not too much. I feel like we can easily just kind of brush through the all three, and then mm. I mean, like each one, and then I can kind of give my full view on it as all right a then we'll, let's go to the second one because the second one is literally the same goddamn movie city all on the, over again except it's an even bigger letdown this godzilla city on the edge of battle this one only has two monsters it's got that big godzilla and then you have uh a new version of mechagodzilla and he's like that a mechagodzilla Mecha Godzilla. that is a city why did they make mechagodzilla a city in this I was trying to think of something clever and I already forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's a city and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just, like, you, you get like the aliens. So there's two alien races and each race represents a monster. And one of those races represents Mechagodzilla. I'm like, yo, we gotta, this, this is our city and we're going to make sure you can destroy Godzilla. To do so, we must uh, merge with the, with the city. And they're like, what? And they're just yeah. like, yes, yeah, so we die and become part of Mechagodzilla. And then he should be able to take out Godzilla. And they're like trying to merge the humans too. And it's all this insane shit. And basically this alien race goes extinct because they all willingly merge with mechagodzilla to the point where basically like we're, they're like we're gonna kill godzilla and then the humans there are like yo this isn't what we wanted um and they kind of tricked us so we should probably stop them instead of fight godzilla let's just stop them and they have to kind of work together to not necessarily work with godzilla but they just kind of work to then destroy mechagodzilla because they're like this isn't what we wanted and we need to stop this before it gets out of control and does something that we will not want to occur and they do so and you get you lose your mechagodzilla city and yeah it's just there's not honestly anything else besides um the mothra uh you you get introduced to the mothra tribe and it's like these humans that actually survived and stayed on the planet during this 20,000 years. So in a way they devolved uh, in terms of like, you know, language, they become very savage, but they adapted to survive at the same time. And they're honestly, it's a, like I said, I'm going to wait till after to kind of go through the designs and the concepts and stuff, but um, still very slow, but it doesn't get the same pass the last one does get because you're you're coming in thinking there'll be more and you don't really get that in this one either. Yeah, this one delivered even less, I think, because we didn't even get a Mecha Godzilla fight. It was just very, very much so. Just I, these were rough to get through. They're they're honestly they're boring. Like, like that's I, I want to watch them. I've only watched them all once. I want to watch them again just to kind of like reanalyze them a bit. But other than that, like I'm just kind of like these ones. I'm good off and not watching for a very long time after i'm fine with never watching them again um so i guess it takes us to the last one the planet eater and this is the one that pissed me off the most actually Ghidorah. 
is the Panatita. <laughs> and uh, how could they do that to yeah, King Ghidorah? The, they got that that so the other race of aliens are like, yo, we worship this monster. His name's Ghidorah, and you have to die to also. All these aliens are just like, yeah. So to make this alien powerful, you have to die. And it's like, why are you trying? Why is everyone trying to kill everybody? Like, what's up with this? It's so stupid. It's just so dumb. Because then they're all like, it, this brings up my biggest problem with Haro too. Is that like, you know, they they explain at the end that you know, Godzilla clearly killed king Ghidorah at the end of this movie and then they they say oh well he can come back he's still having hallucinations and everything it's like you know king Ghidorah can come back and and all that and but it's like well who's gonna bring him back all that alien race that worshiped him is dead and and plus you saw godzilla killed him oh wait who who did they say would be able to notice it uh what do you mean like how would they be able how do you be able to come back exactly did they say at the end he just warns him that he's that he'll always be in his head and that he's gonna that Ghidorah will come back one day oh the alien yeah the alien was like you know the, like the, main dude that was in yeah, charge Haro because they named him Haro after Haro Nakajima the guy who played the original Godzilla the main Sinatra. character or the alien the main character okay but wait so I'm trying to remember because well, the, the alien is like similar. stuck in his head or something even though he's dead yes uh and, okay and he tells him that you know Ghidorah is gonna come back and everything so uh because of you know society eventually gets to this point it's saying so many it's trying to be so deep and i was just like doing anything at all exactly i was like these are fine concepts you didn't earn the right to throw this on us in this trilogy i'm sorry you did not the weird thing too is you get all these different alien races and they're each one is like yo kill yourself to do this thing and then if humanity and you're like you know humanity got here for a reason godzilla destroyed them for a reason and it's like they didn't learn and you're like this time is our opportunity to learn and this movie ends with like you know one of the surviving humans is like this uh because like the the humans that survive and come back uh pretty much join up with the mothra tribe like they're pretty much Mm -hmm. like this is humanity after and they'll coexist with godzilla pretty much and they are or at least one of them is like your scientist dude or history guy but he's like oh imagine what we could do with that remaining mechagodzilla technology we still got and it's like even though he's been like kind of the voice of reason it, they it goes to show they're like even those who are the most noble can still if given the wrong tools make history repeat itself and you have how to um make the ultimate sacrifice in three different ways because he's like one the is his companion, the female companion he's had the whole time is like succumbing to this Mechagodzilla virus. Uh, they still have that Mechagodzilla tech that is still there. And they have, you know, potentially, yeah, what's in his head with the other alien talking about Ghidorah. So he's like, and I think he's tired of living anyway. So he's like, um, I'm just going to take all of these, run it at Godzilla and just, you know, all birds, one stone and close all loose ends pretty much to ensure that humanity has a, a, a safe survival and the earth will be okay and that does occur and it makes sense mostly but it's like i, I think he kind of fucked everybody to be in, honest. A, in a way i would say but like I, I it's like you know it was better that way because it's like i wouldn't trust anyone to make a godzilla tech anyway i'd be like yeah that shit needs to be destroyed like i don't care if it's important tech like fuck it we did it once do it again like we're probably not gonna live to see it but like you know start over that's just how it goes it's just like at the same time too the road to get there wasn't worth it and the build-up it didn't it would have actually meant something if you actually had a more substantial trilogy there to lead right. up to that because you're just kind of more tired than anything at that point and you're like really that you want to do that right now after everything else we just did and see you could always do a tragedy where like you know all the people die and everything but if you're not careful, it could always come off as a real slap in the face to your viewer. And the biggest slap in the face is when they just killed off all the human, all the characters on the ship. Yeah, they, they, they're trying to make you care about all these different characters and they just start getting them all. And you're just yeah. like, what was the point of any of this? And... Exactly. I was just like, everybody loses so hard in the end. I'm just like, well, what was the point of all this then? Like, you, It, I... it feels very <laughs> pointless. And yeah. I would say, I guess, is it okay to, to kind of jump to it as a trilogy as a whole? Oh, yeah. Let's just trash so, the whole thing. I think 
so this is where I think it, they did good. They did very interesting concepts for everything. I loved, I honestly really liked, I dig the Godzilla design here. I, oh, yeah, I, I like that I it's agree. like a very different, cool Earth Godzilla. Like, I want one of those figures. That'd be dope. Um, it reminds me of something like that Biollante would evolve into. Yeah. I can appreciate. I don't love them necessarily, but I can appreciate the concepts they're going for for both Mechagodzilla and Ghidorah. Mechagodzilla being like, yo, this alien race created him as like a city and it's just like this insane, it's like weird monster. I mean, like human uh, machine, like alien machine uh, merger where it's like your final form. And then you have uh, the other aliens worshiping Ghidorah and Ghidorah being like this weird extra dement like weird multi-dimensional monster that like literally can transcend dimensions and is just like this weird anomaly of a beast that comes through and requires like these insane sacrifices and you're getting all these different heaven concepts practically some of them are like yo mechagodzilla is heaven some of them are like Ghidorah is heaven and then everyone's like bro what the fuck are you talking about like i just <laughs> i just want to smile on the earth man and honestly it's all really interesting and these could have actually worked the issue is it drags through three separate films that take way too long for nothing to happen and i think honestly this would have been really cool if they took all of the important portions of this and put it into a single film you could have had a single film where they come back they start dealing with godzilla they immediately then do the Mecha Godzilla shit and then they end up with the Ghidorah shit. And they could have done all of that in one film, honestly. Like, it, yeah. I get, like, make it one two hour film and it would have worked. And I think, honestly, I, I think it would have been good. Uh, yeah, but they just, I, you could get away with bloated. It's, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And you can get away with killing all those people off at the end and all that uh, in a single movie, but you don't drag people. You know, I know George R. R. Martin does that with Game of Thrones. I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, so but I know well, he, 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 he ties people to a chariot and just drags them around. He goes, "You want that book?" It's like, "Yeah, well, hang on, I got like three exactly. movie properties." On it too. But you don't make three movies and make people slog through it just to have the end. It just to have it all not matter in the end. I honestly don't know anyone that likes these movies i'm gonna be completely honest like yeah, I, I, I i even big God, like i mean i think we're both hardcore godzilla fans like there most godzilla fans i i could be speaking when i shouldn't be but i feel like most people that are big godzilla fans don't like this either i haven't and pe- people who don't even like like people who just like anime don't like these movies yeah they just they don't, don't they don't fit and hmm. i would say you know it's like that one of the things where I said, you know, if you want to watch every single Godzilla movie, you're more than welcome to try these and just watch them just purely to understand, like, this is interesting. I see where it's going. It just could have been handled so much better. But, like, you had a good concept. You just didn't do it well. And you know what would have made a better Godzilla, Godzilla anime movie? Final Wars. Okay, that was like I don't know where it's going. Yeah, yeah. Final Final Wars is just fuck. Uh, Final Wars. I don't know why. I just never, I never like thinking about. That. I don't like that movie either, but I think it would actually probably would have worked as an anime and uh, GMK. God. I think GMK would have been a good anime too. Yeah, but at least we got a. I know, I know you don't, you may not like it, but I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing your other point because that actually, whereas these were like anime movies, you're just like, dude, is this even anime? Like yeah. the new the show coming next, I'm like, okay, this is like actually. Well, yeah, let's talk about Singular like, Point a little bit because so sure. let's just wrap up the the trilogy real quick. Uh, they suck. Um, yeah, don't watch them unless you actually. Don't waste your time with that. Actually, don't. They're, they're really life's too like, short. It's it was like four and a half hours altogether or something. Yeah, like, oh, just... that's four hours of your life that you're never gonna get back. It's uh... Uh, don't watch them. Um, I they're on the bottom of the barrel for Godzilla movies for me. I think Godzilla's Revenge. If you're bored on Netflix, do knock yourself out, I guess, because it's just on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. They'll put you to sleep. That's for sure. Yeah, that's very true. Um, A boring Godzilla movie. I never thought I'd see the day, but um, (laughs) yeah. uh, So the next one is that's coming out is singular point. That's a, a new Godzilla anime. I haven't really been following anything about it i don't know what it's about i think it's about follow some kids and everything which is very i guess anime type 
plot. It's dude. It's I've been watching everything. I've been keeping up with everything. It's yeah. it's got a. I forget which um anime studio is doing it, but it's like a really well known one. So people are actually excited because it's like a an acclaimed studio doing it, uh, or at least they're known for like some good stuff in the past and. It's interesting because it looks like Godzilla is massive in this one. And then all the other monsters are like half his size or something because they're like, they're like threats that the humans can kind of handle potentially using mechs. And in this one, it's interesting because dude, you got so many monsters in this and they look completely different. And some like, well, I mean, one specifically, I'm just kind of like, all right, it was just like the Jaguar. Rod- I was going to say Rodan, but um, oh, I haven't seen Rodan. I don't even know. what Jaguar looks, like. looks just fun. I, he looks ridiculous. It's so ridiculous that I'm just like, yo, let's just, I, I, I want to see where this goes. I've only seen the Godzilla design and the Jet Jaguar design. Um, Do you want me to list off who's in this so far? It's, it's everybody, isn't it? Yeah, we got Godzilla. We got uh, Jet Jaguar. We got Rodan. We have Anguirus. We have Finally. Gabara. We have, I believe... Wow. Yeah, Gabera's in it, and he for the first time I'm like, oh, he doesn't look like a fucking stupid anti bullying guy. Uh, yeah, uh, you have Hedora, you have Kumunga. I'm pretty sure it has Manda and maybe Abira. It's like the, the ones I was getting confused in terms of the design was Abira, Manda, and Titanosaurus. Because it could be just, I, I'm pretty sure it might just be Manda. Because the designs have look like, the design's so obscure, it could be one, any of them practically. You're just like, is it this one or is it this one? Like, I honestly can't tell. I'm pretty sure it's Manda, though. Um, it might not be Titanosaurus. And then I, I think they show a beer. I can't remember. But uh, Hedora looks just like a blue ghost. It's really funny. Uh, he looks really interesting. And... Um, yeah, it just it looks really cool the way they've designed all these monsters. J- Jaguar is like, I just I, I love I love what they're doing where it's like these humans are working on them and it's like it's like a pit crew practically, and they they have these J- Jaguar jackets like their J- Jaguar color practically they're, they're like red and stuff, and they're you got like hat it's a weird vast cr- like cast of characters in this that look like they're all different facets like. Some dudes look military, some dudes like they're engineers, some dudes look like they're scientists, some dudes look like they're businessmen. It, it just looks so, like a weird, weird cast. And there's so many things going on. And you're just like, the whole thing you're just watching and you're just thinking like the, the one thing you're getting from the humans is just like, I fight monsters. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> but it's, it, it's doing what the uh, Netflix trilogy doesn't do. And it's make it feel like an anime. And that's the way I'm taking this is they're finally like, this is the real like, hey, this is what Godzilla would be like if it was an anime. And I'm like, all right, show me. I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm like all every promo that's come out. I just it keeps getting me more excited because of just how much fun it looks like it's going to be. And that's right. It's to. just the monster designs are kind of suffering from some of the things I like to call the venom effect. And that's one of the problems I had with Shin Godzilla. And that is it's. Like with the character Venom from from Marvel, is that he's such a cool design, but eventually over the years, people like different artists have just gone so over the top with him, like the way they draw him with like the tongue, the slime, the huge teeth, and everything, the the muscles and everything that they just they eventually turned him from looking like a really cool character when Todd McFarlane drew him to just a really ugly looking. Uh, character and I'm just like it doesn't even look cool anymore he just looks ugly to look at and I think they did that a little bit with Shin Godzilla although he was supposed to look like an abomination yeah he was and, doing that. yeah and this new anime singular point like I look at some of the things I'm just like they just kind of look ugly like they don't look cool to look at and you know but I I'll still watch it and give it a chance um my expectations are going to be low but at the same time I I do like a lot of the more art, the art direction that they're going for and everything. Cause I don't like the computer animated look of the, the anime trilogy. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, I hope that it changes my mind. I hope so too. Um, yeah. I, they haven't said when it's coming out. I think it just launched in Japan, yeah. uh, Netflix, Japan, and it'll air on TV there too, but they haven't given a date yet for uh, Netflix uh, America yet. It'll probably pop up on Hulu or Netflix. 
I mean, it's it is a Netflix original too. They just haven't like it's for some reason it's only showing in the Netflix uh, Japanese Netflix. Oh, at the so moment. you probably got to have like a VPN or something to switch your things. If you, yeah, I'm, I'm I'll just I mean I'm I'm at this point I'm waiting, but yeah, it's pretty much yeah. going to come out in Netflix USA. They said at a later date. They haven't specified one though. I I'll, would assume though sooner rather than later. I'll I'm probably watching Japanese wait, either way. I'll wait for an English dub because like animes, uh, cartoons are the one thing I'm just like I don't care because the voice the mouth never really uh matches up anyway in the cartoon so i'm just like eh, that's fine but most godzilla movies i'm just like i'll watch that in japanese okay yeah but i think is that it did we go that's all of it man oh wow the rewire is pretty short so how do you think that the rewire ranks compared to the other ones um we're gonna include legendary and rewatch too. It's it's different. It's very different. Like th- these are different times. Like you feel like you know, Heisei in a way closes the door on Godzilla. Millennium yeah. Era is like the end of an era practically because it's like oh Godzilla is gone for like ten years, and like I said, Millennium Era is kind of it, not messy. Main I would actually you know it is messy. It is yeah. very messy and it's like all over the place because nothing makes sense and everything's separate. This is a more understandable situation of that because I'm feeling, you know, you're getting, hey, here's live action Godzilla, but here's like animated. And you're like, oh, it's animated. I'm already feeling a separate connection here. Plus the comics. Yeah, you're, you're, everything feels separate and not confusing. Whereas in the Millennium, you're like, is this like a sequel to the other movie? Like what's going on? They're like, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. And here things are much more clear so i'd say it's more organized it's definitely more organized uh you're getting a lot more content like we're honestly in a weird golden age of godzilla right now i'd say kind of like we're in a very uh, either golden age or renaissance era but uh it's it's a time where you're getting godzilla idw comics all different ones and they just got the license again so you're getting three more new ones you're getting american godzilla from hollywood you're getting japanese live action godzilla from toho you're getting animated godzilla from netflix you're getting all of a sudden godzilla art prints and tiki mugs and statues from mondo you're getting all these different apparel collections from also mondo but also huff and all these other monster arts everything even freaking crunchyroll has exclusive uh godzilla uh merchandise and like heroes and villains which is like usually just star wars for the most part he's coming has... way back to the mainstream in the united states because he was pretty mainstream when i was little but then we went through a dead period and now he's really he's coming back godzilla okay. is now becoming a full merchandising monster yeah well he <laughs> always has been but yeah, i think but he's like going... more so like in, yeah. he's got a such a present he hasn't so, we haven't seen a presence this big in america since the 98 matthew Broderick movie and before that Nothing was as big before that, I would say. Like, this yeah. is the second time it's been this massive. And but, God damn it. I mentioned this in my King Kong uh, video game review that went up uh, the other, I think it was the day before yesterday, by the time this gets posted. There is a severe lack of kaiju video games in general. And there needs to be a good. La- we've never gotten a good Godzilla video game. We've gotten some fun ones. I don't think we've ever gotten one that's like, this is it and it's that so i mean it's it's kind of hard like I, i'm i'd be fine honestly if they just remastered uh war of the monsters because that's probably the best one. Oh, that does oh the, the one that doesn't even have godzilla or anything it either. has a version I it's know. got their version of godzilla just like it has their version of kong and their version of a gundam oh like they have each type of kind of like that insert monster type here from that movie I do want to that that does I want to say real quick what my ideal Godzilla movie would be, you know, they've attempted to do you know go with a more serious route and everything, and we got that with Shin Godzilla and the 2014 Godzilla, you know, compared to the 54 one. I want to see one, and I think that you know, without giving too much away about what I thought of Kong versus Godzilla, I think this is the closest one we've gotten in a while to that. I want to see one that just goes straight into the cheese and almost plays like a tribute to the 50s b movie and you know the the old showa era movies like in uh 
like War of the Monsters did with the video game. When you know you have that creepy music with the aliens that come down, it's really corny. It's like shot almost like a 1950s movie and everything with all the monsters and the aliens fighting each other. You do a Godzilla movie, a destroy all monsters style movie with the legendary Godzilla and the legendary Kong and all the other monsters and bring in some of the other classic kaiju too, like Anguirus and all that. That'd be great. That'd be so awesome. Like have aliens come down and deliver a message like they do at the beginning of uh destroy all monsters melee on the GameCube, where like the aliens just like he goes, We're here to take all of your resources because it's what we do. You know, just lean into the cheese and make a fun movie like that. You know, dump the human characters almost completely and just make them make them cardboard cutouts that are just like, you know, idiots. I don't know. That's the kind of Godzilla movie I kind of want to see at this point. Uh, give me a Rodan movie. I just want. To... Oh yeah, Rodan. <laughs> I just want the Rodan. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm like, there's so I'm at this point where the way they talk about this monster verse now, they're like, yo, you gotta fight for it now online. It feels like they're kind of saying like, you gotta do the release the Snyder cut for this now, kind of. And I'm like, dude, do you doesn't help with the people review bombing? Do you, you want to see the? I think that's finally over. I think it feels I like it's so. over because the they've been showing the user scores and they're insanely positive, like yeah. insane. I was never expecting them to be this high before. I mean, I also didn't expect Zack Snyder's just like to be this high either. So I'm just like, whoa. This is Plus, cool. it's free money at this point for Toho and everybody. I mean, people yeah. are hooked on Godzilla over here, and I'm happy about that. I, I it's it's just at this point too. I'm getting not fatigued by the monsters or anything like that. I'm just fatigued at least in social media because I'm like, I feel like there's a whiteboard behind me. That's like, yo, hashtags. You got to save the venture brothers. You got to bring back that final season of teen Titans. You never got uh, not the go, but like the original teen Titans. I got monster verse yeah. and don't get me started on how many separate different DC ones. I It's like, I don't know. And that's for some, why I don't get involved reason, in any all of that Warner shit. Brothers. I don't get why it's all Warner Brothers. I'm like, dude, why is it all these hashtags you need to do for Warner Brothers? What's happening right now? Yeah, that's a whole it's, nother can of yeah, worms. Whole, but yeah, but yeah, I uh, I tend not to get involved in any of that. But anyways, I think that yeah. The, do you have anything else to say, Comrade? Uh, go get HBO Max and watch Godzilla vs. Kong. Also, if you haven't seen the other legendary movies, they're all on HBO Max along with majority of the show era movies. So yeah. you'll have pretty much a full it's what it's well worth the $15 a month, honestly, with the amount yeah. of stuff you're getting on there. I, I'm glad that Toho is being a lot less stingy with Godzilla lately and they're letting other people, you know, like uh, IDW and all that, like get to, to do some Godzilla projects. So yeah, I, uh, the next video that it's going to be up on YouTube will be our Kong Skull or Godzilla versus Kong review. Yeah. And it was fun running through all the different movies with you, Kamran. Uh, hopefully we'll Definitely. meet again for Godzilla. What's it called? Godzilla what point? Singular point. Godzilla singular point. Yeah, we'll see if maybe yeah. we can meet again for that. For sure. And if you guys didn't buy it, honestly, if you're going to buy one thing, just get that show era criterion collection. Like that's you get 15 movies right there. Yeah, I it's, should probably I should probably get on that. It's really good. Yeah. But that's that's it. Uh, you know, enjoy these movies. Have a great time with Godzilla. Make, you know, it doesn't matter. Wh- whichever one you like, make that one your Godzilla. Enjoy whichever one you want to enjoy. For me, like when it always, if you ever go into my soul, you're going to find the 1990, like 394 Godzilla from Heisei where it's like, oh, yeah, this is the one that was like in Space Godzilla. And then he turned into Burgundy Godzilla. Like for me, that's my Godzilla. But yeah. for everyone, it's going to be very different and that's, that's cool honestly about it yeah it makes it very unique it's such a massive amount of movies now that people you can have people in different areas liking different versions of him and it, that's honestly awesome yeah so with that being said comrade where can we find you you can find me on a uh, twitter at gogo comzilla and of course you can find me on my show sutra side talk which is also a channel a uh, weekly gaming movie tv show podcast that i do with uh one of my co-hosts james and i also got suture sidewatch on there which is a every other week podcast that i do with uh brandon Blockstore from apollo and we'll talk about a specific film each episode and just kind of analyze it and of course we have the cut of steel which danny is also on and we go in depth on dceu movies 
and got a two-part Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, uh, episode on that's like basically in each part it's like about two hours and you can also find the video version of course on this channel too at through planet from black hole and uh up to it down to it which is a uh kind of off the rails podcast where me and some friends from school uh talk about a specific topic and just go crazy with it pretty much but you can find Sutra side talk on twitter and instagram as well and on various pl- podcast platforms at Sutra side talk all right and uh, you can find me at www.dannybenson.com. That has links to all my social media as well as my personal blog. Also, be sure to check out our website, www.thirdplanet.news. Uh, we have a bunch of cool content up on there. You could also find our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. We'll see you on the Kong versus Godzilla review. See you later. So long.